this lecture i will discuss about the master slave d latch or master slave d flip flop or sometimes we will also called as edge trigger d flip flop right now first we will see what is the problem with simple d latch so we know this is the logic symbol for this d latch that is the input is d and clock are enable so always remember latches are level sensitive that's why it is simply enable or clock and this q1 q bar is the output so what was the function table whenever we give d input as 0 the output also will be 0 whenever we give 1 the output also will be 1 and the condition is the enable should be high if it is a positive level trigger the timing diagram of this d latch so what will be happen we'll see so this is a clock so we'll assume this is a positive level triggered d latch so whenever positive level comes so depending on the d i will get the output see the moment the level one is so we'll get this one as the output so whatever the previous state we don't uh, bother about that one the moment clock is high the it will see the d input so d input is high so it will be become high up to this then after this see this after some time the input is changed to zero but still the clock is high so the output also will goes to zero now the moment clock is low so it will maintain the previous state then again it goes to high because the input is going high and it is maintaining up to one see it is not changing so we will get the one only again so on right again it is changing to one now what is the problem here is so suppose the propagation delay of this d latch is some uh, very small compared to this uh, pulse width so input is changing the output is also changing right so that is the actual problem so at the end of the clock we don't know what is the output so it may be one it may be zero now where we'll get the main problem when we use these latches when you want to store some information suppose that is like this now there is a uh, d three d flip flops are connected in a cascade to store three bit of information that is initially it is one zero one right now i want to change this as 0 0 1 about the next uh, data i need to store is 0 0 1 right so i need to change this in uh, this uh, d flip flop out or d latch output only now what is condition is see the clock is here the d input i I'm, i want to change 0 here see here now initially 1 0 1 the moment d input is 0 and clock is high if you see for all the three latches the clock is same clock so the moment it is high all three flip flops will work simultaneously the moment this are work simultaneously so whatever the changes occur in this q1 so it is going down to zero right then this is already zero so it will follow this one so this is one this also will go down to zero so both three i mean three will become zero 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 because all are working with the same clock the moment this data 0 is initiated here so it will be transferred here so but it is still high so this also will be transferred here and so on so the moment we change this input all three latches will change the output simultaneously so that is a problem actually so whatever the changes occur in this first latch all same changes will be occur in the all three latches so that is a problem similarly if it is one again it goes one then this also will be goes high and this one also will goes high right one 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 so that is a problem so when so that is if i want to insert this zero in this only this latch output but if you see the clock is still high for all the latches so that is all latches will work simultaneously and the q1 will become one and q2 also will become one and q3 also will become one yes or no so initially i want to change only this bit so it became zero 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 suppose uh, either intentionally or unintentionally the data input is changed to one after this one so again it is changed to one now it is one so it is connected to the next uh, latch and the still the clock is high so again the q2 will also will become one and q3 also will become one right so even though we don't want to change the second latch third latch outputs but the, we are applying the same clock for all the latches and the d input is given to the first stage so it is transferring 
then it is still high the clock then it is also transferring that same output and so on so so that is so that is even though we don't want to change the second latch and third latch output but the all the latches are working with the same clock so if one latch the first latch output is changing so simultaneously the other latch outputs are changing the problem when we want to store the information in this latches right so to avoid this uh, problem so we will go for the master slave d flip flop or we can say edge triggered d flip flop now we will discuss about the master slave d flip flop or edge triggered d flip flop if i see the block diagram it is similar to master slave jk flip flop what we discussed in the previous lecture right it contains two latches one is master and one is slave and the master will work with the clock directly that is positive level triggered clock and if i see the slave it is a complement of this clock so here i will get this is like a clock bar so that is when clock is equal to zero so zero is going here and zero bar means one is going here so this will be enable this will be in disable mode when clock is equal to high this will be enable mode and clock bar means i will get zero so this will be in disable mode so at a time only one latch will work so this operation will remove that uncertainty what we are getting in this previous simple single latch right so we'll see what is the operation it's very simple operation when clock is equal to one that is we can say logic one level see so one is coming here and one bar means zero is coming here so this will be disabled and this will be enabled now that is happening the external data d input is transferred to the master so whatever we give the input it will be transferred to the the output y as a output y so that is a master output right then what is happens to this the slave so slave is disabled because clock bar is equal to zero so because it's enable input is zero see clock bar is equal to zero means what is this enable input is simply zero so that is as simple as that when clock is equal to one whatever the input is coming here so it will goes here but here we are taking the output so output is not changing remember only master output is changing but the final output is not changing so that is the advantage in this master slave this uh, d flip flop now if i see the second one when clock is equal to zero the master latch is disabled so the master is not working at all so even the input is changing the output of the master will not change and the slave latch is enabled because enable is equal to one and its output q is equal to the master output y see whenever this enable pin is high so whatever the output of the master is just a transfer to the output because we know the d flip d latch what will what is the operation of the latch whatever the input is just to transfer to the output so the output q is simply what is the output of the master that is happening in this so now see if i see when clock is equal to 1 so it is just transferring this d to this y when clock is equal to 0 that is when we are making 1 to 0 the output we are getting right so that's why the whole operation we can say negative edge triggered because when clock is equal to 0 whenever it is making 1 to 0 the slave will give the directly final output so that's why it is called negative edge triggered d flip flop right now the whole operation will uh, describe in these uh, three sentences that is the output may change only once yes or no see the output q is changing only once whenever the clock is becoming zero because the slave will work when clock is equal to zero second point is a change in the output is triggered by the negative edge of the clock yes or no so whenever the clock transition from one to zero then only the, we are getting the output so that is the second point so a change in the output is triggered by the negative edge of the clock what is the third point is the change may occur only during the clock's negative level right so whatever this or when we draw this clock so what when we are getting this uh, change in the output in the negative level so that's why it is called negative edge triggered triggered d flip flop right so only one time the output is changing that's why we can say this is a edge trigger flip flop and because it is a uh, changing the output in the negative level so we will say negative edge triggered so we can make positive edge triggered d flip flop also so the block diagram will be like this so we have to use two inverters to make positive edge that is 
so now see after this clock if i use one more inverter and that inverter output goes to the enable of this master and the next if i use one more inverter after that inverter if this is going to the what do you call this slave uh, latch now if i see when clock is equal to zero so when clock is equal to zero so this will be one this will be zero so when clock is equal to zero this will be in enable mode and this will be in disable mode when clock is equal to one so it will get zero here and here i will get one so see when clock is equal to one we are getting the output so we can we can say this is a positive edge triggered flip flop why when the clock is coming from zero to one we are getting the output so that's why it is a positive level triggered flip flop now if i see the internal logic diagram so it will be looking like this so we'll have master as the master is simply d latch master is d latch but if i see this diagram it is looking like simply sr latch right so this is also i explained in the previous lecture when even though when you are going for master slave jk flip flop master is always jk flip flop and this slave is is sr latch so master is again here see the d input is coming to this s and for r this is coming d bar so it is a d latch and this is a sr latch so combination of these will become total d uh, latch or we can say master slave uh, what you call d flip flop or edge trigger d flip flop now see this is only one inverter we are using so it is a negative edge trigger d flip flop so if i use one more inverter here so this, that will become positive edge trigger d flip flop now so what is the final conclusion here is now when clock is equal to 1 so this is transferring this d input to here right now even though this input is changing so many times unless until we apply the next clock there is a, when clock is equal to 0 so then only it will change the output so the moment we apply this clock transition from this is from 1 to 0 suppose this is from 1 to 0 so this will become 1 so whenever it is becoming 1 whatever the present available are presently available in, in this point that will be transferred to the output right so this is the logic diagram and operation of this master slave d flip flop or we can say negative edge tri trigger negative edge trigger d flip flop right if you are having any doubt please post a comment there is a small announcement so we have left with these concepts in this digital circuits that is counters resistors then uh, semiconductor memories and uh, this uh, programmable logical arrays and the uh, CMOS implementations of this uh, different different logic functions and uh, analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters right now I will resume this uh, digital circuits again after one week next uh, from tomorrow onwards I will start the electron devices course so once we uh, complete some uh, topics in this uh, electron devices course then parallelly I will cover this digital circuits uh, the concepts as well as the electronic devices concepts right